page number 163. 163. Three. Yeah, chapter 3. I think that one, that same thing. You just opened it, no? Yeah. Back back. That's old Bhagavad Gita, maybe the page number is different. Yeah, you have to. What is that? Karma Yoga. Actually, you have to go back. <laughs> you take other copy. That's the old one. Content is same, but just. Uh, right, so the page is number. Page is So now we'll start with the chapter 3, which is entitled as a Karma Yoga. So previously in second chapter, we have studied, it's like a content of Gita Samaran. So all the topics, what Lord going to explain in next uh, 16 chapters, he has already covered it in briefly in the uh, second chapter. Like he uh, first spoke about the living entity, who we are, what is our relationship with the Lord. How to establish that relationship? What is Nishkam Karma Yoga? What is Bhakti Yoga? What is Buddhi Yoga? And then what are the qualities of the person who performs the devotional service? That things already has covered in second chapter. Now, in the third chapter, Lord is explaining about how to understand this buddhi yoga? Buddhi, here he refers as an intelligence. So how to use this intelligence for the service of the Lord? And Krishna is asking him that if that buddhi yoga or devotional service is superior to everything, why you are pushing me for this ghastly war then? Why you are forcing me to do this karma? What is the reason behind that? Then in the first two verses of this chapter 3, Arjuna inquires whether better to situate in knowledge or to work. And two are totally opposite to each other. So what you are asking me to do. Please clear it. So here the chapter starts with Arjuna's question. Arjuna vacha jayasi cheta karamanaste mata buddhir janardana tat kim karamani ghore maam yojaya sikeshava Arjuna said, O janardana, O kesha, why do you want to engage me in this ghastly warfare? If you think that the intelligence is better than the fruitive word. In the Purpat Prabhupada explains that the Supreme Personality of a Goddess Sri Krishna has very elaborately described the constitution of the soul in previous chapter with a view to delivering his intimate friend Arjuna from the ocean of material grief. That's where the first words where Lord started his teachings, there he asked him, A shochananga shochasko pragya vadansha bhashase. You are thinking about the thing which suppose, which suppose not to be thought about. Because he was thinking about the killing of his own kinsman and how he is going to get sin by that, how the uh, Kulachar will be get destroyed and how the Varna Sankara will happen. He was thinking about all that things. As for the civilized human being, what he was thinking that was rational. Because as for the Dharma Shastra and Niti Shastra, he was giving these arguments. But as our identity is none other than the part and parcel of the Lord, being a Jivas, we are part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we are eternal. So Jiva is not going to get that. Who is going to get that? This body. So he said, you are thinking about the body, not about the soul. So there comes the part of intelligence, which makes you to think about. 
And that intelligence comes from the Lord. Dadami buddhi yogam tam yinamamu tayam. I give that intelligence. Which intelligence? The intelligence through which you can discriminate. What's good, what bad, what is sat, what is asat. And that comes by Lord's mercy. Then Lord has explained him that. And now he is asking you to fight again. So he said, why? Question is just if ask you what was the reason behind that. Vyami Shreneva Bhat Yena Shreyo Aham Apnu. See here we can understand the qualities of disciple also. Generally we accept the spirituality. Blindly. Mass of people they follow, so we should also follow. This Baba is good because people they think about him. They spread so much about him, so he is good, so we follow him. We accept someone as a spiritual master, but where? In the photographs only. Yeah, I know, he is my spiritual master, but where? On the. There is no personal touch. Shishya steham sharimam tvam prapanna. He said, please accept me as your disciple and instruct me. The real relationship between guru and disciple where instructions are given and instructions are followed. Disciple, the word comes from discipline. And who is going to set that discipline? Spiritual master. So here Arjuna is asking me, asking uh, the Lordship, that why you are asking me to fight? And what an ishchitya. My intelligence is bewildered and please let me know what exactly I have to do. Don't confuse me. When there is a contradiction in the instruction, you should ask your spiritual master. Jidnyasu Shreya Muttama. The person who wants to attain the Shreya means best in his life. He should Jigyasu. He should be inquiring. He should inquire about that. And that's why Arjuna he shows this specific quality of a disciple who is serious and sincere, want to make progress in his spiritual life. So he is asking Krishna, let me know, let me get clear from this stuff. And every time he uses one name, just first verse is spelled, he says Keshava. Keshava, why Lord is known as a Keshava? Keshava means who has beautiful hair. In the age of Akali, Lavanyam Keshavardhanam said that people will think themselves beautiful, mainly the men, by growing their hairs, which can attract the people. Mostly the curly hairs or curly locks of hairs, people get more attracted to that. So he said, you are more attractive. I can understand that. But you are putting me in the confusion. That attraction is creating confusion for me. So Keshava, Get me read out of that. And then he says, my intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instruction. Therefore, please tell me decisively which will be most beneficial for me. And after hearing this question from Arjuna, Lord, from text 3 to 9, he explains about Nishkama Karma. Krishna recommends Nishkam Karma Yoga work combined with a knowledge and detachment. That's the art of living. The fruit of that work should be offered for the satisfaction of Krishna. Nishkam Karma Yoga allows the soul who is active by nature to be purified through his detached activity. See, there are two philosophies, there are two schools of philosophy. One is personal, one is impersonal. Personal who accept Lord as a person, Sabun, Sakar. And impersonal, they accept Lord as a Nirgun, Nirakar. 
where you will have activities where there is a akar where is, there are senses because senses through which you can perform activities so here we can understand karma yoga is meant for the people who accepts lord as a person impersonalists what they think everything is null and void for them ultimately you have to enjoy in nirvana or you have to enjoy in the impersonal brahman or feature of the lord where nothing you have to do you just sit quiet and meditate on but what just on like and here lord says that soul who is active by nature just try to understand we are living entities and got entangled in this material body in this material body we are caged or encaged and still we are so active then try to understand when he gets out of this material body will he be a stagnant will be somewhere in the dormant stage can't be in china they have one particular punishment where people they go really crazy within 3 days what they do they put that person in a cell which has all the six sides totally white color walls are white ceiling is white floor is white bed is white the plate they give him to eat that is also white what the food they give that is also white whoever goes to meet him they also put the white cloth and go to meet him by seeing that monotone that person goes totally crazy within a three days not more than that then try to understand just after considering that after liberation pulse jiva goes and he just stays in a light what will happen who is by nature active in his liberated state can he be inactive even tarka so logically is also not acceptable and that's why brahma when he offered his prayer to their lordship he says that uh ये अरविंदाक्ष विमुक्त मिनाश त्वयि असद्भावात अविशुद्ध बुद्धय आरूय कृक्षेण परम पदम यथा पतंती अदा अनाधृत विश्वत पदांग्रे इफ समन डिनाइज टू एक्सेप्ट द पर्सनल फीचर ऑफ द लॉर्ड देन ही कमिट्स ऑफेंस एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड व्हाट हैपन्स देन अनाधृत बिकॉज ही disrespect your lotus feet yashmat padangre patandi adaha he falls down from that brahman stage what he have attained from that brahman nirvana also he falls down so it essential to understand you on this moment. i don't think so. check okay then jiva which is active in the condition stage he is active so he performs karma then which karma he should perform that will get rid of the reactions of karma and that karma is known as an ishtam karma and that has explained from text third to text nine so he says shri bhagavan uvach लोकेस्मदानिष्ठा पुरा प्रोक्ता मैया न्ञानगेन सांख्यामगेन योगिना द सुप्रीम पर्सनलिटी ऑफ अ गॉड एट सेट फॉर सिंधस अर्जुना आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन दैट देर आर टू क्लासेस ऑफ मैन हु ट्राई टू रियलाइज दि सन सम आर इंक्लाइन टू अंडरस्टैंड इट बाय इंपेरिकल philosophical speculation through jnana and their destination is impersonal brahma and others by devotional service in the chapter second text number 39 
तेषते अभिता सांख्य बुद्धिर्योग बुद्धियायुक्त यया पार्थ कर्म बंधम प्रयास दस फॉर आई हैव डिस्क्राइब दिस नॉलेज टू यू थ्रू एनालिटिकल स्टडी नाउ लिसन एज एक्सप्लेन इन इट टर्म्स ऑफ वर्किंग विदाउट फ्रोटिंग रिजल्ट ओ सन ऑफ प्रथा वेन यू एक्ट इन सच ए नॉलेज यू कैन फ्री योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम द बॉन्डेज ऑफ बर्थ सो दिस थिंग which lord has explained in the text number 39 that has elaborated in this seven verses of third chapter of bhagavad gita from 3 to 9 so this is how the whole bhagavad gita each and every chapter is interlinked so lord has already explained about the analytical study of the material world which is known as a sankhya yoga with that knowledge if some performs activities that is known as an ishtam karma yoga because that knowledge gives you detachment it's a simple thing that we can understand if i know this body never belongs to me why because when i was born parent they claimed about this body they they said he is my son and like that when i grown up and got married wife started claiming this body is my husband so everything what he earns and everything that belongs to me when he got a kids then kids they started showing their possession on this body at the office level colleagues and at the fag end of the life the death personification that claims that this is my body i am taking it up and we have to leave this body generally we say oh he has left that his body means what so he never belonged there that body never belonged him if you have this understanding so when you will perform any activity through this body then that automatically detachment will come to you any how it is not mine so someone has given me as a trustee for this and so i have to perform like someone makes you trustee of some particular temple or some society there you never work as a owner you work as a trustee vishwasta with detachment anyhow it's not mine but i am selflessly serving you you will you never get attached to the activities that you do there so same way if you get this analytical study this sankhya yoga then automatically this nishkam karma yoga will be followed with that getting it make some sense yeah. then further lord says na karmanam arambhana naishkarkimam purusho ashnute na cha sanyasat eva siddhim samadhi gachati not by merely abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection so here lord indirectly hammering the ganis or the impersonalists because what they say don't get in any entangle in any activity just abstain restrict them naiti 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 not this not this not this leave it because all these are material neither this kind of intelligence or not renouncing everything you will attain the perfection so what exactly one has to do which thing you will renounce which you possess simple i want to donate this does it belongs to me and if someone says no i got a renunciation of this america i want to go back now does america belongs to you that you wanted to give it up your body which you are nurturing for lifetime it never belongs to you then what you are going to renounce it you can renounce those thing which you possess which you earn which you can claim these are mine but in this world nothing is yours even we say that by hard working i have got this money but really is your money 
we men we work for a month at the end we got our get our salary how many or how much of that money that really we use it for our own self maybe for twice or thrice a year we can have a new clothes maybe someone is too fashion passionate for the clothes he can have it every month or every week he can go and buy but whatever amount he earns does he able to utilize for everything for himself no because automatically what you earn that belongs to someone else also they have all rights on that so what you can give up in this world which never belongs to you so the perfection you can attain by restricting or abstaining yourself from the activities or neither renouncing them then prabhupad gives one example sometime people are you sure about walk by walking on the road and you get some wallet one person will think by seeing that wallet oh it's not mine so i will not look at that and i will not take it we will move from there someone will who cares i got it i will use it and the third one what he will do oh he will open it he will check it out he must be having some address there inside some driving license or some card which can shows that it belongs to him. he contacts that person and give his back to him so which is the better way just to leave it on the road take it and enjoy or just give it whom it belongs which is the best way third way. so same way in this world we have to do impersonalists they wanted to restrict themselves or abstain themselves for taking that karmis they try to enjoy it they utilize them for their own sense but devotee what they do they utilize everything for the person whom it belongs and this whole world belongs to whom if we go for the lord says aham sarvasya prabho matta sarva pravarta i am the controller and owner of everything and from it everything emanates from me and devote is they know it and they utilize all that things in his service as he said what i need from you patram pushpam param doyam yo me bhaktya prayachyate he is not asking anything else he is asking everything which is his readily available in the nature that you can give it to the lord with love and devotion like a small kid goes to his papa and asks i need some 10 bucks or this is for what no i want i want to get something so he gives it then that boy goes to the shop and gets some 10 bucks worth nice gift wrap it around thumbs and next day morning before his papa wakes up he goes lovingly he wakes him and gives him papa happy birthday to you does that father thinks that this rascal took 10 10 bucks from me yesterday he brought something and he is giving me now what do you think hmm? it will be like a surprise for him and that time that particular activity he remembers till the last breath of his life see my son he loves me so much he never says he never explains his friends or his relatives that whatever he has given that's from my money only but what he says that act of love that love he spreads out everywhere he said you know my son how much he loves me only in the morning he came out and gave me this gift so same way everything belongs to the lord but when we offer it again back to the lord tera tujh ko ye arpan so when we do that that increases our loving relationship with the lord and that's what bhagavad gita is teaching us and lord wants that from us nothing else and he becomes happy 
everything <laughs> we are getting it from here only and offering it to him which never belongs to us it belongs to him only but that gesture of giving that reciprocation that takes us out from this reactions of activity make some sense then further lord says nahi kashit kshanam api jatum tishthatya karmakrut karyate yavashak karma sarvah prakriti janair gunaihi no one can live without performing any activity because all we are work under the influence of modes of material nature someone else is there who is controlling us who is that karmana daiva netrena jantur deha prapatya that daiva our prarabdha whatever activities that we have done in previous life they are monitored by whom modes of material nature prakriti jane guna this modes of material nature raja tama and sattva in day only we can make it up when you get up from the bed early in the morning you are fresh you are more tend to perform some activities which are in the mood of goodness you like to take bath then you would like to meditate or do some pranayam or remember some prayers offer some prayer remember the lord shiva be peaceful that's natural early in the morning as after 9 9:30 the mode of passion starts working on us so you become more activate to perform your regular job schedule or your activities which can earn money and when the day goes down near about the sunset you feel lethargic little bit lazy no don't feel that much energetic like to go home and take bath and get relax this mode of ignorance so this is how they are acting on us there are some people the whole day they are in the mode of goodness there are some people they are in the mode of passion and there are some people who just booze out for days together because they are in the mode of ignorance so no one can live without performing any activity because everyone is governed by the modes of material nature and that's why lord says that nahi kashit kshanam api jatu tishthati akarma krut not a single moment you can remain without performing any karma karyate yavashak karma sarva prakrute janah everyone is forced to act helplessly according to qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature therefore no one can refrain from doing something not even for a moment ah now proper has quoted one shloka from shrimad bhagavatam tatva swadharmam charanam bhujam hare भजन अपक्वो अथ पते तथो यदि यद्रम अभूद अमुष्य किम को वार्थ आप्तो अभजता स्वधर्म इफ समन टेक्स टू कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस और डिवोशनल सर्विस टू द लॉर्ड इवन दव ही मे नॉट फॉलो द प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटीज इन शास्त्रास to execute the devotional service properly and even though he may fall down from the standard there is a no loss or evil for him but if he carries out all the injunctions for purification in shastras that does not it avail him if he is not krishna conscious so the purifactory process is necessary for reaching this point of krishna consciousness therefore sanyas or any purifactory process is to help reach the ultimate goal of becoming krishna conscious without which everything is considered as a failure in shrimad bhagavatam it is explained that samsiddhir hari poshana 
the ultimate perfection of each and every activity whether lord is pleased with that or not if it is not then all the endeavor is useless what are you may do and that same thing as explained in this verse you may have performed so many pious activities but if you have not developed love and devotion for the lord all these pious activities cause bondage for you in the 17th chapter that has explained in the mode of goodness someone performs pious activity in the mode of passion someone performs activities which bounds him in this material world and in the mode of ignorance he performs such activities that never gets him up on any higher levels whether it is a gold whether it is a copper or whether it is a iron shackle is shackle that will keep you bound on you so same way this guna guna this sanskrit word means rope what's the purpose of rope for what we use generally rope to bind something so same way whether it is a mode of goodness whether it is a satoguna whether it is a rajoguna or is a tamoguna purpose of them is to bind you in this material world in the mode of goodness how one gets bound the sense of knowledge and happiness sukham satve bandha in the mode of goodness the feeling of happiness that's bound that's why all the demigods they enjoy their luxurious life but as their credits are over shinya punya varte lokam vishanti they are kicked out from there and they fall down in this mortal world on the earthly planet and tamo gachanti adha in the mode of goodness they go down in a such a way that they never come up and mad madhe satvasto rajasa and who wants to perform activities for sense gratification they stays in this earthly planet where they have to suffer for the reaction animals they don't have to suffer for their any sinful action because they don't eat for their sense gratification they do it as per the laws of nature demigods also they don't perform any pious activities when they got the status of demigods because there is only that life is meant to enjoy the credits that you have earned it you can't earn more credits there only in this human form of a life on the earthly planets you can create new karma you can enjoy what as per your prarabdha is there but again you can create some karma that can help you for future life either to go to heavenly planets or degrade yourself to animal kingdom and that's why this earthly planet or human form of a life especially is known as a tapo janma tapo divyam putra ka in a sattva because that tapasya the austerity that purifies you and makes you eligible to elevate yourself on this stage of krishna consciousness that's what it to say if you were on pious activities you will go to the heavenly planets but not sure you will not get devotion there indra himself he prays in the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam oh my lord if there is a some punya kuta krita punya punja if that punya is there then please give us birth on the earthly planet especially in bharata varsha it is clearly mentioned in that verse they beg at the lotus feet of the lord if some pious credits are there please give us birth here it's spontaneous to render service to you it's very easy to remember you to think about you to discuss about you other places it's very difficult in marathi tukara mara says that swargiche te amara to ichhita thi deva madhya loki baba janma cha e vandi the mortals in the heavenly planets they pray to their lordship please give us birth on this earthly planet where we can perform your devotion and that's what lord explains here the further he says 
कर्मेन्द्रियाणि संयम य आस्ते मनसा स्मरण इंद्रिया अर्थान विमूढ़ आत्मा मिथ्याचार सो उच्यते वन हु रिस्ट्रेंस द सेंसेस ऑफ एक्शन बट हुज माइंड डवेल्स ऑन सेंस ऑफ सेक्स सर्टेनली डिल्यूट्स हिमसेल्फ एंड इज कॉल्ड अ प्रिटेंडर दैट्स वेरी हार्ड दैट्स द रियलिटी वी प्रिटेंड टू बी डिवोटेड और गॉडली मैन बट रियली वी आर He has given the parameter through which you can judge yourself, who we are, whether we are pretender or whether we are genuine, sincere practitioner who wants to make progress in spiritual life. People they wanted to make show of spirituality, for that they join some trust, some society, they go to some temple. One sense it's okay, rather than going to some clubs or pubs, getting membership there and getting involved there. Rather than that, it's better at least you are coming to temple. But after coming to temple, if you are not able to make a right choice and make progress in a proper direction, then nothing but Lord says you are pretender. Senses may be restrained, but if mind is not controlled. that whole show will be useless like sitting here but right now mind is wandering everywhere sitting here and remembering some 10 years back i have given 10 bucks to someone and he has not returned it now such a foolish thoughts comes in our mind which are totally irrelevant to the present situation and generally it happens when you go to temple or when you are hearing some discourse irrelevant thing comes in the mind that's the nature of mind because it never wants to get control and the whole spiritual process is meant to control our mind in the sixth chapter lord says manayeva uddharet atmanam naratmanam yanatmanam na uddharet the person who has controlled his mind only he can deliver himself anatmanasya shatrutve vartet atmayeva shatru and if he has not able to control the mind he is living with the biggest enemy and everyone wants to have a peace if mind is not control of where from you are going to get a peace is that possible no in the amrut bindu upanishad it is said mana eva manushyanam karanam moksha bandhe bandho vishaya sangat moksha eva nirvishe mind is the cause of our bondage and liberation if it is attached with the activities of sense gratification that will create bondage for us and it get detached from that then that will create a path which is broad way or free way to go to the lordship or liberation the person whose mind is not control is considered here as a pretender And Lord never likes mitra chalis, who are pretending. Then further he says, "Yastu indriyani manasa niyamya arabhate arjuna karmendi yehi karma yogam asakta sa vishishate." He says, on the other hand, if sincere person tries to control the active senses. by the mind and begins karma yoga in krishna consciousness without attachment he is by far superior this is what nishkam karma yoga you do your activities but don't get mentally entangled with them because senses by nature they are active and they will do act their work but mind should not get entangled that's the art of living but difficult but he says niyamya arambhate if you do it with a practice control them it works 
नियतम कुरु कर्मत्वम कर्म जायो यह कर्मनः शरीर यात्रा भी चते न प्रसिद्धियत अकर्मनः परखो परफॉर्म योर प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटी फॉर डूइंग सो इज बेटर देन नॉट वर्किंग वन कैन नॉट इवन मेंटेन वन फिजिकल बॉडी विदाउट वर्क लाइक वन सन्यासी दे हैव टू आल्सो गो एंड बेक देन ओनली दे आर गोइंग टू गेट आर्म After giving up everything, also you have to perform some activities to maintain yourself. Then it's better to follow your prescribed duty because Arjuna wanted to quit. He put down his uh, bow and arrow. Everything he said, "Oh my Lord, now I'll give up. I don't want to work now. Enough of this. Huh? I want to give up. Better I should go and beg, but I don't want to fight." I said, "How? How it can happen?" being a kshatriya you are passionate and you need to work you can't just give up like that even you give up also and you become sanyasi if someone comes and he challenges you you will again start fighting because that's your nature so better to fight pres- better to do your prescribed duties rather than giving them up but how to do that that he has explained in the next book You do. You perform your prescribed duty, but in what mood? In the next verse, he says, "Yadnyartha karmano anyatra lokoyam karma bandha tadartham karma konte ya mukta sanga samachara yadnyartha karmano anyatra lokoyam karma bandha work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed." Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. So, what is meant by yajna? The activities which is performed to satisfy Lord Vishnu, they are known as the yajna. When we go further, then there are different sort of yajnas they have explained: swadhyaya yajna, dravya yajna, tapo yajna. All that has explained. Ultimately, all these things meant for what? To please the supreme personality of God. If you don't please Him, lokoyam karma bandhana, the same activity will become bondage for you. That's why, what we do, when we cook, we offer it to the Lord. Because while cooking. while bringing that material you have to work while performing activities sometimes you have to do some illegal activities huh, to earn money even though it is shrimad bhagavatam says that how honestly and sincerely you may have earned money it comes along with a 15 anarthas 15 sinful seeds which causes sin how to get rid of that दाने न शुद्ध्यते धनम बाय चैरिटी वेल्थ गेट्स प्यूरिफाइड देन होम टू गिव दिस वेल्थ होम टू गिव दिस चैरिटी ब्राह्मण बिकॉज दे आर डियर टू द लॉर्ड बिकॉज दे यूज दैट चैरिटी फॉर द सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड विद दैट चैरिटी धन गेट्स प्यूरिफाइड Otherwise, giving to some hospital, giving to some trust, that will spoils. That brings you a reaction. For example, you are given it to some charitable trust which runs the uh, eye hospital. They do surgery freely for the people, and people they get rid of the blindness and they work. And if some thief comes who is blind because of some circumstances if he get proper eyes what he will be engaged again after going so whatever he does since whatever activity or you may be some homeless guy is going around the road and you are stopping at the signal he comes and he asks for some money you give it to him he takes that and goes and gets drugs or some intoxication who is going to get that karma 
it's you you may have given with a nice heart but you are given to the wrong person so your charity is in the chari- in the mode of ignorance which will brings you down from your elevated level so while giving donation also one has to be very careful whom they are giving and where it is ultimately utilized if it is some santir hari toshana okay can go otherwise best way cook and feed the people what you have to feed before feeding them offer it to the lord so it will become sinless and that will purify them ahara shuddhi sattva shuddhi sattva shuddhi dhyamati if food is purified and how to purify food by offering it to the lord so yajnana yajnartha karmano anyat so you have to perform the activities for the pleasure of wish and if you don't do that then lokoyam karma bandhana the same activities will become bondage for you and this is how lord has explained here about the nishkama karma yoga so any point that need to be discussed or any question any comment about this palatable to digest because if you don't study this thing properly otherwise foolish people what they think bhagavad gita teaches about karma yoga ha huh? is the general understanding of indian people what bhagavad gita teaches karmanya vadikaras what it means which karma he wants that you should do it this karma yajnartha karma to karma that pleases krishna that karma one has to they forget the next line ma karma phal hetu bhir and they claim that person as a karma yogi oh he is working the donkey will be the most eligible person to get that title as a karma yogi because he is a selfless worker he never depends upon his owner to eat he works for his owner and goes and eats on the garbage can somewhere they never fed him so his work is selfless so that is what krishna says to do it to us no yadnyat karmano anyatra lokoyam karma we should do karma that will please lord lord krishna because that will purify your existence that will purify your consciousness that will brings you to the krishna consciousness or devotional service to the lord which will give you the higher purpose of your life and for that reason only the whole bhagavad gita has that's what the karma yoga lord wants from us karma yoga yoga the yoga word comes from yuja dhatu the root verb of yoga is yuja yuja means which connects so the thing which connects you with the lord the activity which connects you with the lord is called as karma yoga so what do you may do then arjuna fighting on the battlefield for him that was karma yoga housewife cooking at home making a nice preparation and offering it to the lord that is karma yoga for her kids going to the school properly studying their studies keeping in the mind that the ultimate goal is to understand krishna why i am doing all these things because now i am this is the time when i can do all this thing so let me do it so that i can understand krishna someone is working and earning money for what because i have to maintain my family which is my responsibility which is given by the lord and they are the part and parcel of the lord and i am i have invited them to be my family members so it is my responsibility to take care of them as a part and parcel of the lord and for that reason i am working if he has that consideration then that same activity becomes karma yoga for him because it is again connecting him with the lord even taking bath that also becomes karma yoga 
if in your mind you are thinking i have to go and take darshan of the lord shit so for what i am getting fresh because i am i have to be presentable in front of the lord this is how the god consciousness or krishna consciousness works in our practical life whatever your abilities are there whatever capacities are there we need to engage it in krishna and that's the ultimate goal why people are earning so much of money ultimately they go somewhere to get peace of mind where they go to the person who is not entangled in all this activity there they go ultimately because that's the thing which is going to give you a peace in your life not what you are exactly doing but the consciousness behind that will give you peace of mind make sense so next time we will discuss about how this karma can be performed in this material world when we are staying all this material surrounding the lord says about how we should have a proper connection with the divine god what are the things that we have to do which can give us a proper understanding which will not have a more duality but peaceful life we can live with that so that that has explained in next seven verses from 10 to 16 okay thank you very much hari krishna Okay. Actually, every Wednesday we are having such oh, a discussion. Okay. So, whenever we get time, we can just drop. Okay. Bye.